leaky gut is real. So don't let anybody else tell you otherwise, not your doctor and certainly not your gastroenterologist. And the crazy thing about it is the gastroenterologist has been talking about leaky gut over the last maybe five years as if they discovered it, but the general surgeons have been aware of the presence of leaky gut since the mid 80s. And what the whole purpose of this video is, is to share with you, what is leaky gut? What does it mean? What precipitates it? And most importantly, what are the steps, again, without using conventional medications, that we can use to begin to repair this important barrier to the outside world? So by the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of what leaky gut is. What are some of the factors that are precipitating and worsening leaky gut that you can begin to turn around today? And finally, what are three different supplements that you can use that have good scientific evidence to demonstrate that we can begin to repair this important membrane that lines the internal part of our gut? I'm Scott Resnick. I'm a medical doctor who believes that the future of medicine is in videos like this, helping people like you to become your own best representatives of your health and turning around all aspects of health without using drugs. What I want to do is to first start with a review of what the gut is, because when you understand what it is and what it's doing, then we can understand what is happening when this important single cell layer that we refer to as the mucosa of the gut begins to break apart. This is what precipitates leaky gut. So the gut is 30 feet long in most people. And it is said that if you were to take the lining of the gut, which has all these crypts and valleys and involutions to increase and maximize surface area for absorption of our food, if you were to spread that flat, it's estimated that this would be the size of a doubles tennis court. I mean, if you think about it, it's pretty Herculean because our immune system, 70% of the immune cells, which reside just under the layer of the gut, are able to monitor this incredible amount of space for something as small as 10 billionths of a meter in diameter. This is the average diameter of a virus. So the gut is separated from effectively the entire outside world by a single cell layer known as the gastric mucosa. And this is a set of cells that line up shoulder to so shoulder that are connected by something known as tight junctions. And what these tight junctions do is they block the passage of any environmental molecules or microbes or toxins between these cells, forcing all of these molecules to be absorbed through the cells so that our immune system can selectively choose what it is that we take into our body. But what happens is there are a number of different factors in the environment that over time serve to break down this single cell layer. Perhaps one of the most common factors that so many of us are exposed to is stress. We know that with high cortisol and high adrenaline, our body diverts blood away from our gut, thereby not allowing this delicate single cell lining to fully regenerate itself every three to five days. But there are a number of other factors as well that contribute to leaky gut. And probably some of the more common ones are things like alcohol or the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Motrin or ibuprofen. And finally, there are a number of medications conventionally prescribed that can also contribute to leaky gut. What happens in leaky gut is that we begin to break down these gap junctions, these tight junctions that hold these cells together. And then the space between the cells becomes permeable to things like toxins and microbes and other molecules that then become recognized by the underlying immune system. So... It's important to recognize that there are a number of factors that we can control to help to minimize the presence of leaky gut. Cut back on your alcohol, avoid using so many non anti-inflammatories, and consume a diet which is higher in natural home-cooked foods as opposed to the standard American diet, which is filled with all kinds of processed foods and toxins. Ultimately, these molecules are making an egress across this lining of the gut, and they're being exposed to the immune system. And it's my belief that so much of the autoimmunity that is taking place around the world is driven in large part by leakiness in the gut and exposure to the underlying immune system of all these different molecular shapes and forms.
Remember, our immune system's job is to respond to dangerous strangers. And the immune system is just looking at molecular signals. I mean, it doesn't really designate between a, um, you know, a protein on a virus or a protein from a poorly digested steak that you ate the previous night. Ultimately, our immune system's job is to protect us from these dangerous strangers. So there are a number of different nutrients that have been well studied that have been shown to help this lining of the gut. And probably one of the first is a good probiotic. We know that one of the factors that contributes to leaky gut, that contributes to disrupting some of these cellular mechanisms that hold these cells shoulder to shoulder are the presence of the wrong type of bacteria within the gut. This microbiome is so important. And studies have shown that if you can convert your diet from one of the standard American diet, I mean, you know, this is uh, hot dogs and potato chips and sodas and all that crap, to one of just wholesome, uh, whole-based foods that we can begin to change the constitution, change the bacterial balance within our gut in as little as three days. So that's a good first step to begin to heal your leaky gut. If you're eating any processed foods, you're eating any packaged foods that don't have an expiration date, you want to convert yourself to a diet which is in whole foods, and I'd also recommend including some good probiotics and also some fermented foods as well. And these are things like kimchi and sauerkraut. And it's been known for a long time that foods of this nature that contain the bacteria lactobacillus and bifidobacter all serve to create a bacterial balance in the gut that helps to repair this leakiness in the lining of the gut. The next important nutrient that you can use to help to fix your gut is something known as glutamine. Now, glutamine is an amino acid and it is preserved along the length of the gut. And it so happens that the preferred food for these mucosal cells, these enterocytes that line the gut is glutamine. So if you can consume maybe two to five grams of glutamine daily, this has been so well studied and shown to improve leaky gut. In fact, there was one great study that looked at human and animal models where they actually gave the models or gave the subjects a medication known as indomethacin. This is kind of a supercharged Motrin. And after causing leaky gut, Uh, which can be diagnosed through some pretty basic laboratory tests. They then put the subjects in the study on glutamine and demonstrated by demonstrating that this lactulose and mannitol test that's associated with leaky gut showed less degrees of leakiness. The next thing that you can use to improve leaky gut is a group of plants that are known as polyphenols. And these are things that you've heard of, I'm sure. Things like berberine and quercetin resveratrol, EGCG, which is the active component of green tea. These are all a number of herbs that collectively help to not only improve the bacterial balance along the inside of the gut, but also help the immune system and the underlying cells to repair themselves and and to repair this leakiness. And the final thing, as I promised, which helps to repair leaky gut is fiber. Something simple like a tablespoon or two of psyllium husk taken daily can help to improve the bacterial balance as well as your immune system health. And here's how it works. So we're not cows, we're not horses. We can't digest uh, something like cellulose and fiber, but we have a number of different bacteria that reside in our gut that do. And what happens is, is when the carbohydrates present in fiber are broken down to very small molecules, these are two, three, and four carbon molecules known as short chain fatty acids or butyric acid and propionic acid. These molecules are like manna to our immune system. And when we consume the right amount of fiber, two things happen. One is we increase our bowel's transit time and the bowel's function. Because when we're having more stools on a more regular basis, the toxins that we take into our body are passed out more rapidly. And the other thing that happens is fiber is broken down into these short chain fatty acids. So there you have it, guys. There are three simple steps to understand some interventions that you can make today to begin to turn around leaky gut. The first thing is, is work on your diet. Think about the exposure to different toxins like alcohol and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Take those out of your diet. We talked about the way that probiotics and the use of probiotic foods like kimchi or sauerkraut can deliver these helpful and healing bacteria 
to the gut and then begin to rebuild this leakiness. And finally, there are a number of different herbs, berberine, quercetin, resveratrol, EGCG, curcumin. These are all interventions that good scientific studies have shown can help repair this leakiness in the gut. As always, I'm making these videos to empower you guys with good information. And if you'd like to know more about the different ways that we can help to regulate our gut, be sure to click on, I think the video is going to show up over here. And of course, be sure to like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts. I'll be sure to respond to your thoughts in your comments. And as always, I will see you guys in another video and take care.